Okay, welcome friends to Country Mama Musings. You know, we have been getting together every Thursday to work on the squares for our hashtag heirloom Afghan crochet along. We're three squares in and I've got my three colors here of the squares that I'm working on, but I've had some mention by some of my friends here in my YouTube family that say, oh, Country Mama, I don't know how to crochet. Please start me at the very beginning. So we're gonna take our squares and we're gonna set them aside and we're gonna help some of our friends with some of the very basics of crochet so we can get them started so they can see about joining us in the crochet along when they're comfortable. So the first thing I want to recommend is I don't want you to start with too small of a hook. I would like to recommend that you start with a size H, which is a 5.0 millimeter, or an I. I wouldn't go any smaller than that because you're going to have to learn how to manipulate and work the hook. Let's set our hook down and let's talk about our yarn. I recommend starting with a nice worsted weight acrylic yarn. If you start with cotton yarn, cotton tends to be a little bit sticky. It doesn't glide with the hook as easily to get started. So something that glides nice and easy is just a nice basic acrylic yarn. Start with that. You don't have to get fancy. You don't have to spend a lot of money on your yarn. Just a nice basic acrylic. This is a four ply worsted weight yarn. Now the first thing that you're going to need to learn to do when you're going to start a crochet project is how to do a slip knot. If you can tie your shoes, you can make a slip knot. So holding your yarn, there are a couple basic ways that you can start your slip knot. I'm going to show both of them to you. There are other ways. I kind of go in between two that I will share with you here today. The first one is, is if you just take your yarn and make a loop with it just like that and then take the tail and feed it up through that loop and pull it makes a lovely little slip knot now the reason it's called a slip knot is because this is awfully big this is, you're not going to start a crochet project with this big huge knot but you can pull one end of your work and it slips down so that it is a nice workable size to put on your hook and get started. So let's go through the step by step on how I do a slip knot. And it pulls right out when you need to. It's so simple, so handy. So what I like to do is I like to just kind of twist my yarn and pinch it. Twist my yarn and pinch it. See there? We've just got this nice little area where the yarn crosses over itself. You're going to take one part of that yarn, you're going to take the tail of that yarn, and you're just going to feed a loop up through that crisscross loop and pull. And that makes your slip knot. And you can pull it back out and you can do it again. It's very similar to just tying your shoe and pulling that rabbit ear through when you tie your shoe. Do you remember doing that when you learned to tie your shoes when you were little? The whole loop swoop and pull. Let's do that again. Just cross over and push up a loop through the center and give it a nice little pull and you've got your slip knot. Now there's another way for those of you who want to try another way to do your slip knot and again this is how we will start the majority of your crochet projects. There are some more advanced techniques you may come across where somebody says to do a magic circle. We're not working on that today. Uh, we're just going to work on doing a slip knot. The other way that you can do it is holding your yarn, just like this, so it kind of slides through your hand. Just kind of hold your yarn and wrap it around your index finger twice, and then grab that yarn again. See there how you've got just two loops wrapped around your finger? Take this back loop and have it hopscotch or leapfrog over the first loop, then grab what used to be in front and is now in back, grab this loop and you're going to leapfrog it over the first loop and all the way off your finger. Grab both of your strings and pull tight and now you have a slip knot. So that's kind of our leapfrog approach. Let's try that again. Holding your yarn, wrap it around your index finger twice 
and then secure it with your fingers so you've got everything's kind of nice and tight taut but not too tight because you're going to want to be able to manipulate these two loops that are on your finger take the back loop leapfrog over the front loop take what used to be the front loop that is now in the back and leapfrog over the loop and right off the end of your finger and then give your string ends a nice little tug and you have a little slip knot one more time holding our yarn secure we're going to wrap the yarn around our index finger twice and tuck it back in with the other end of your yarn there. Take the back loop, leapfrog over the front loop. Take the one that's in the back now and leapfrog over the loop and off of your finger. Pull your ends tight and you have a nice little slip knot. So practice either one of those two techniques. Before you know it, you'll be making your slip knots and not even thinking about it. It will just become second nature, just like it is when you tie your shoes. You can do it without looking, you can do it without thinking. So there's our little loop swoop and pull slip knot. And this is our leapfrog. Leap over, leap over off of your finger, pull tight, and there we go. So practice these until you find the one that works best for you, the one that you're most comfortable with. And you can even switch up between your projects and do them either way, it doesn't matter. But just practice, okay? So now that we've learned how to do our slip knot, let's move on to something else. I'm just going to make a little slip knot here. I'm going to set this down. Let's talk about a couple of important things. How to hold your hook. You know, depending on who teaches you how to crochet, depending on your personal preferences, just depending on how you hold utensils in general, that may determine how you hold your hook. Some people hold the hook like this. Okay, almost like a pencil. See? Or a chopstick. They can hold it like this, and this is how they choose to work. Some people hold it like this, like a knife. It's all going to be up to your own personal preference. You will see some people working on their crafts and they're holding their crochet hook like a knife. You will see some people working on their crochet projects and they're holding it like a pencil. I would suggest that you try both ways as you're learning. Determine which one feels most natural for you. I personally have never been able to crochet holding my hook like a pencil. I've always held it like a knife. So in these tutorials, I will be holding my crochet hook the way that I find most comfortable. Another thing that we want to talk about before we really get started into crochet is how are you going to hold your yarn? This yarn can't just be hanging out here loosey-goosey willy-nilly. In order to get good crochet projects, this is going to have to have some tension on it. Now there are different ways that people determine how they want to hold their yarn to create tension. So as you see different crochet enthusiasts on YouTube tutorials, you will see that they all tend to hold their yarn in a unique way. I'm going to share with you how I hold my yarn and you can determine if this is what feels best to you or if you see something on another YouTube tutorial that might feel a little more comfortable for you, just know that there's no right way, no wrong way. It's what feels best for you. This is a personal experience. I'm just showing you the basics. Adapt it as best you can to make it work for you. So one thing that I always like to do when I start showing someone how to crochet is I like for them to lay their hand flat and just take the yarn and put it between their pinky and their ring finger. Kind of pinch the pinky up against the ring finger just loosely and then pull the yarn through and see how that feels. You can feel a little bit of tension. If you don't have it very tight, it's going to slip out. It's going to be loose. Your work is going to be sloppy. Just feel 
to where you can have enough tension where you pull that yarn through where it's just nice and smooth, not too loose, not too tight. You don't want to pinch it so tight that you're having to tug while you're doing your work because then your work is going to be uneven. So I like to start there. I like to tell people just put your yarn through between your ring and your pinky. Just make sure that your skin connects until you're able to pull that yarn through and get a feel for that. Now once you've got it to where you're able to pull through between your pinky and your ring finger, I want you to do a second step for your tension. I'd like for you to go ahead and put the yarn between your ring finger and your pinky, flip your wrist over, and now put it between your index finger and your middle finger. I want you to just get used to just learning how to load your yarn that way. Anytime I load my yarn for tension, I always start with my wrist kind of upside down. I grab my yarn in between my pinky and my ring finger. I flip my wrist over and I just tuck my index finger underneath. So now the yarn is also between my index finger and my middle finger. And now I have tension here and I have tension here. And you can see how the yarn slides through nicely. So I want you to practice palm up in between your pinky dip that index finger down and grab it and pull your yarn through. Just take some time if you're just sitting watching TV, sitting relaxing, just take a piece of yarn and practice how you can load your yarn up in between your fingers to get ready for a project. After a while you'll be doing this without even thinking. This is how I control my tension for my work. There's going to be a lot of things to think about when you first start crocheting and just know that getting the proper tension for you may take a little bit of practice. Don't be too hard on yourself if you find that trying to concentrate on this and other aspects of crocheting are a little bit overwhelming. They'll come together. So I want you to just practice on working on your tension and holding your yarn in this manner as we get started. Okay, so practice this and then come back and we'll work on a little bit more. Okay, we've selected our hook. We've learned how to do a nice little slip stitch here so that we can start on our project. And we've learned how to load our yarn up on our fingers. Let's work on a chain stitch. I want to back up a little bit and talk about this slip stitch. Always make sure that you leave yourself a nice long tail when you're starting any project. I have seen some people on YouTube that start and they've only got a teeny, teeny, tiny little tail. Well, if you want your work to at some point possibly come undone, you do that. But I'm telling you right now, you want a nice, long tail that you can work back into your project and then sew it in to secure it so nothing comes undone. There's nothing worse than putting in a bunch of time and effort into a beautiful project and then having it come undone because you didn't give yourself enough room here at the end. So make sure you have a nice long tail there. We have our slip stitch. Let's go ahead and load up our work so we know that we've got our tension here. And I want you to hold that slip stitch in between the thumb and index finger of the same hand that you're going to have your tension. Okay? The hook is going to be in your other hand. And we're just going to go ahead and let's go ahead and put that hook onto our slip stitch. Now you can use that slip stitch to just tighten a little bit. You don't want this too tight. Let's talk about the anatomy of this hook. If you notice, the hook has a very nice pointed end. This is helpful when you want to actually insert your hook in between stitches. It's nice and pointed. If it were blunt, it would be an issue, but it's nice and pointed. Then you have this really nice hook part and you have a narrow part of the shaft right here. Now when you're working your crochet stitches, you want your loops to mostly be on this thicker part of the shaft of the hook. And then here in the center, 
we have a broad part of the hook. It has the identifying marks on it so you can know what size it is. And it's also, that really sits really nice in between your thumb and your fingers or your thumb and your fingers this way, depending on how you hold your crochet hook. Do whatever works best for you. But we've got this loaded on here. Now that we know how this works, I wanna point out to you that as you crochet, the work is going to mostly be done by how you manipulate this hook. This hook doesn't do the work, this hand does the work. You're going to be rotating this hook. See how you've got this nice little flat spot? It works perfect for rotating the hook. So I wanna give you a perfect example of how that's going to work. We have our slip stitch on here. If I wanted to take this hook out and I just pulled forward, look at that. That hook is going to catch that loop. And that's going to happen a lot while you're working on your crochet piece if you don't learn to manipulate the hook. Learn how to roll it in between your fingers. Learn how to use your wrist. Your wrist can rotate a lot too. So just learn and practice. You don't want to keep this stagnant. You don't want to have a death grip on it because you're not going to have any fluidity in how you do your work. So how I was trying to pull this hook out of this loop first, it's catching. But if I take my hook and as I come closer to my loop, if I just rotate it, it's going to slip out. Okay? Let's put that back on there again. If I pull forward and I do not rotate the hook, it catches. If I pull forward and I rotate the hook, it's going to slip right out. And all I did was rotate with my fingers, just like this. So keep this in mind as you're working. And again, as you get into some more detailed work, you might want to use your wrist as well. But mostly, it's really as simple as a quarter turn with your thumb and fingers, just like that. So again, and it doesn't matter, doesn't matter how how tight I hold this, okay? I can really pull down on this and it's not going anywhere this way, but as soon as I rotate so that hook doesn't catch, it'll pop right out. So keep that in mind as you're working on your stitches. Let's work on the very first stitch that you're going to learn as you go into this beautiful world of crochet, and that is the chain stitch. The majority of your work the projects that you work on are going to start with a chain stitch. And even if they don't start with a chain stitch, in your work there's always going to be a chain stitch. So this is the very first thing you need to learn. What you want to do is, I like to use my index finger. See how I've got my tension? We've already talked about how to load up. I like to use my index finger to apply whatever tension I need or to work for me as I'm wrapping this yarn around my hook. This is one technique you're gonna to need to learn because we can't make stitches without wrapping the yarn around the hook. Now some people who first start, they just want to grab their yarn and wrap it around their hook and then try to do a stitch, but look what happens. It spins around. Our slip knot will do just that. It will slip. Okay, we have to have some technique when we get started here to know how to keep our work from slipping away from us. One thing I like to do with that really nice long tail, I just tuck it up over here. Now if I put my yarn on, it's still going to twist, but I've got a little bit more control over it. The other thing is, is when we load up our working hand here for our yarn, I like to just grab my work. We're going to pinch this little knot right here in between our thumb and the middle finger. And that way we can actually load our yarn onto our hook as we yarn over. This technique that we're going to do is called yarn over. You yarn over from, be from behind the hook towards you. So from behind and towards you so that we put a loop onto the hook. Okay, So we have this loop that we already started with. And now because we did a yarn over, we have a loop on this hook now. 
Now what we want to do is don't let go of where you're hanging on to this little knot down here. What we want to do is we want to make sure we pull our crochet hook so that that yarn, that yarn over that we just put on, gets stuck underneath the hook. Remember we were talking about earlier how nothing's going to get out of that hook when it's in that position. That yarn is going to stay on your hook as long as you've got the hook catching it. Now remember we want to work mostly in this thicker part of the shaft of this crochet hook. As we draw our hook closer to our slip stitch, we're going to rotate that hook towards us anywhere between a quarter and a half a turn so that that hook grabs that yarn over and then it slips through the first hook that you had on your hook. And now we just made a chain. Let's do another one. We're going to start from behind the hook and work towards you. We're going to wrap, if this takes, it's almost like a twisting motion. We're going to wrap the yarn around our hook. We're gonna make sure it gets caught up underneath that hook there. Then we're gonna pull our hook towards the loop here that's on our hook. This is our loop, this is our yarn over. We're gonna pull the yarn over towards the loop and as we get closer we're going to rotate the hook towards us so that the hook fits through the loop and brings that yarn over with it and now that is our loop and here we're starting a nice little chain of stitches and as we get a few more on here we will explain the anatomy of these little chains Still holding on to our work with our thumb and our middle finger. We're going to start at the back of the hook and wrap our yarn towards the front, towards us. And we're gonna make sure that it catches in the hook. We're gonna draw the hook towards the loop that's on our hook already. We're gonna draw it down and as we get closer, we're going to rotate the hook so that it fits through the loop, the loop will slide off, and the yarn over now becomes our loop on our hook. And now we have three little chain stitches for our work. Now as this gets longer, you don't have to keep your fingers on the knot now. Now you can move it up a little bit. So let's do a couple more. We have our hook hand, we have our yarn hand, we have good tension. When you have good tension and you can just bring that index finger up a little bit, look how nice, look how nice it makes it so that you can wrap your yarn around. So starting from the back towards you, you're gonna take the yarn, wrap it from behind and towards you so that now it's looped over. This is your yarn over on the hook. This is your yarn over. This is your loop that's on the hook for your next stitch. You're going to pull that crochet hook down towards the loop, catching the yarn over underneath the hook, okay? And as it gets closer to your loop, you're gonna rotate that hook and pull it through the loop that was on your hook and that loop's gonna fall off. Your yarn over now becomes the only loop on your hook. Again, wrapping your yarn from behind towards you around the hook. Make sure that the yarn over is caught underneath the hook portion of your crochet hook. This is your loop that is on the hook. You're going to pull your yarn over towards the loop. And as you get closer to the loop, you're going to rotate your hook and pull the yarn over through the loop, the loop is going to fall off the hook, and now your yarn over becomes the loop. Let's take a look at something real quick here. Let's look at some anatomy of our chain. When you look at your loop that is on the hook, what starts out as your slip knot, but now it's the loop on your hook. Do you see how it's tear shaped? It's like a little tear. When you look at your hook, it's like a little tear. 
Okay, it's not blunt, we discussed this earlier. So as you're pulling through and you rotate, that little tear just slips out of there just perfect. Look, it's almost, I mean really, it's like it's made for one another. You see how perfect that slips through? You want to make sure that your loop on your hook is not too tight and not too loose. You'll learn exactly where you need to have it so that you can make sure that you can pull your yarn over through the loop with ease and yet have a beautiful stitch that's not too sloppy and not too tight. Now I'm going to remove my hook for a moment and let's talk about the little chain that we've made here. We have a chain of one, two, three, four five, six. Six perfect little V's. See how they're nice little V's? We have a front loop, we have a back loop. So if I'm holding this up, this loop is at the front towards me. This loop is at the back away from me of this perfect little V that you see in the stitches. As you do your work, these are going to become more prominent as you get more and more rows on your work, and we'll discuss that in a little bit. If you were to flip this over, you will see that there is just, let me grab my hook here so I can show you with it. There's this little piece of yarn right here that is even. These are all slanted like little V's, right? But as you flip this over, on the back here you've got little pieces of yarn that go straight, almost like a little sewing pattern, do, 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 if you were sewing on a sewing machine. This is called the bar, okay? So as you hold your work towards you, this is the front loop, this is the back loop of that stitch, and on the back is the bar. Okay, now as you watch some people crochet, you will see that when they work on their very first chain, when they get their chain where they want it and they're actually going to start a project, some people will start their stitches in this back loop, but some will choose to rotate and actually put their hook in through where that bar is. And that's something that we can discuss later, why you would want to do that. But for now, let's just work on our chain a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and load up my yarn for my tension. I'm going to pinch my work in between my middle finger and my thumb. I've got my hook in my appropriate hand and I've got a nice, firm, yet loose grip on it so I can rotate it. We're going to yarn over. We have two on our hook here. We're going to take this first one, pull it through the second one. Yarn over and pull through one. And that's another chain. Yarn over, pulling our yarn over through our loop. There's another chain. So a lot of the times when you hear different patterns, you will hear people say yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. That means they might have two loops on their hook. Yarn over, pull through three. They might have three loops on their hook. And as you watch the tutorials that we're putting out, you will hear me say that. You will hear me say yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through three. These are just different things that you will be learning as we go. So we're going to yarn over and pull through one. That makes a chain. And I'm just going to do that, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, and again, see how I'm starting to get a little bit of play here? Just move your fingers up on the project there. It helps you tighten things back up so you have a really nice flow. Again, you don't want things too tight, you don't want things too loose, you want nice even stitches. Do you see how nice and even the stitches are? Now once you've gotten to where you can do three, four, five loops and you're feeling comfortable, this is what I want you to do. I want you to frog it. Do you know why they call it frogging? Because as you're pulling on this, you're ripping it out. Rip it, rip it, rip it, rip it, rip it. I want you to frog your entire 
or I want you to rip it all out. Because what I want you to do is I want you to do your slip stitch again. I want you to put that slip stitch on your hook. Make sure that you pull it up a little bit here till it's where it's just right, not too loose, not too tight. We want our little Goldilocks knot on there so it's nice and perfect, right? Not too loose, not too tight. And now what I want you to do is I want you to chain 10. Yarn over, pull through the loop on your hook, that's one. Yarn over, pull through the loop on your hook, that's two. Yarn over, pull through the loop on your hook, that's three. I usually move my fingers up after three chains. Yarn over, pull through your loop on your hook, that's four. Yarn over, pull through the loop on your hook, that's five. Yarn over, pull through the loop on your hook, that's six. Move my fingers up on my work. Yarn over, pull through the loop on your hook, that's seven. Yarn over, pull through the loop on your hook, that's eight. Yarn over, pull through the loop on your hook, that's nine. Yarn over, pull through the loop on your hook, that's ten. So we just crocheted ten. Let's check our work. The loop that our hook was on does not count. So looking at the little V's that we have here on our work, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten perfect little chains. And can you guess now what I want you to do? You got it. I want you to rip it out. Frog it and start over again. I want you to do this until you're absolutely comfortable to where it becomes second nature for you because you can't move on with your projects until you're comfortable. So again, yarn over, pull through, that's one chain. Yarn over, pull through the loop, that's two. Yarn over, pull through the loop, that's three. Move your fingers up on your work. Yarn over, pull through the loop, that's four. Yarn over, pull through the loop, that's five. Yarn over, pull through the loop, that's six. Are you watching to see how I'm rotating that hook? I'm not doing a lot of work with my hands. A lot of it's just yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through. I think that's nine. Yarn over, pull through. Is that ten? Let's check our work and see. Using our hook to help us, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Remember the loop that was on your hook does not count. I just want you to keep practicing on these three elements. Your slip stitch, how to hold your tools, which is your yarn in your hook, and how to do a chain. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'll do my best to answer you. I'm going to make this available for both left-handed and right-handed crochet enthusiasts, so make sure that you pick the video tutorial that works best for you. All right. We'll see you soon. Until then, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and have a blessed day. Bye-bye.